now we see the normal lateralis normal lateralis is the study of the skull when you see it from the side what are the bones you can see in the normal lateralis you can see the frontal bone parietal bone the occipital bone temporal bone sphenoid bone the zygomatic bone the maxilla mandible and also you can see the nasal bone these are the bones you can see in the normal lateralis what are the features you can see in normal lateralis you can see the superior temporal line so this is the superior temporal line and below this is the inferior temporal line so this inferior temporal line posteriorly it becomes continuous with the supramastoid crest so this is the supramastoid crest so two temporal lines you can see the superior and the inferior temporal line the inferior temporal line becomes continuous with the supramastoid crest next feature we can see is the zygomatic arch so this is the zygomatic arch so the zygomatic arch is formed anteriorly one third by the temporal process of the zygomatic bone so this is the anterior one third which is formed by the temporal process of the zygomatic bone posterior two third is formed by the zygomatic process of the temporal bone so this is a zygomatic process of the temporal bone and if you see connecting this two is the zygomatic temporal suture so this is a zygomatic temporal suture now we can see the arch is separated from the side of the skull by the space which is uh, deeper anteriorly and shallow posteriorly the lateral surface of the zygomatic arch is subcutaneous it has an upper border and the lower border so this is the upper border of the zygomatic arch and this is the lower border of the zygomatic arch the anterior end of the upper border of the zygomatic arch is called as the jugal point whereas the posterior end of the zygomatic arch is attached to the squamous part of the temporal bone by two roots so this is the anterior root and posterior root so it is attached to the squamous part of the temporal bone by the anterior root and the posterior root so if you trace the posterior root it becomes continuous with the supramastoid crest on the inferior surface you can see this is the mandibular fossa so anterior and posterior to the mandibular fossa you have the tubercles so this is the mandibular fossa anterior to this you have the this is the tubercle articular tubercle and posteriorly you get the post glenoid tubercle so this is the articular tubercle and this is the post glenoid tubercle and this is the mandibular fossa next we see about the external acoustic meatus so this is the external acoustic meatus so it is formed anteriorly inferiorly and lower part of the posterior margins so all these margins are formed by the tympanic plate whereas the posterior superior margin is formed by the squamous part of the temporal bone the posterior superior margin is formed by the squamous part of the temporal bone so again i repeat the margins of the external acoustic meatus is formed in the anterior inferior and the lower part of the posterior margin is formed by the tympanic plate whereas the posterior superior margin is formed by the squamous part of the temporal bone next we are going to see about the supra meatal triangle supra meatal triangle is also called as the mckeevens triangle 
so the name itself implies that it's present above the meatus so this is the acoustic meatus above the meatus you have the supramatal triangle the boundaries are it is bounded above by the supramastoid crest anteriorly by the posterior superior margin of the external acoustic meatus and behind by the vertical tangent to the posterior margin of the external acoustic meatus so these are the boundaries of the supramatal triangle so it is bounded above by the supramastoid crest in front by the posterior superior margin of the external acoustic meatus behind by the vertical tangent to the posterior margin of the external acoustic meatus and it forms the lateral wall of the tympanic or mastoid antrum next feature we can see the mastoid part of the temporal bone so this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone this mastoid part of the temporal bone articulates with the posterior inferior part of the parietal bone at the parietomastoid suture so this is the parietomastoid suture and it articulates posteriorly with the squamous part of the occipital bone at the occipitomastoid suture so this is the occipitomastoid suture so this suture unites at the lateral end of the lambdoid suture so this is the lambdoid suture so it unites at the lateral end of the lambdoid suture and this point is called as astreon and this corresponds with the posterior lateral or the mastoid fontanel in the fetal skull so in the mastoid part of the temporal bone you can see this process the projection that is the mastoid process so it is present posterior inferior to the external acoustic meatus and you can see the fissure uh, fissure in between the mastoid process and the tympanic plate so this fissure is called called as the tympanomastoid fissure and here you can see the foramen that is called as the mastoid foramen next feature you can see uh, this is the styloid process so it is a needle like projection just anteromedial to the mastoid process in the anterior part there is a meeting point where uh, the parietal bone the frontal bone the greater wing of the sphenoid and the squamous part of the temporal bone meets so this h shaped suture and this point is called as the terion in the fetal skull it corresponds with the anterolateral fontanel or the sphenoidal fontanel the terion lies 4 cm above the midpoint of the zygomatic arch and 2.5 cm behind the fronto zygomatic suture so this is the fronto zygomatic suture 2.5 cm behind the fronto zygomatic suture and 4 cm above the midpoint of the zygomatic arch the structures lying deep to this or the middle meningeal vein then you have the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery next you have the stem of the lateral sulcus so deep to the terion you have these three structures in relation so whenever there is an injury to this site there will there may be a middle meningeal artery rupture which causes the extra dural hemorrhage and this may compress the motor area of the brain which leads to the paralysis of the opposite side
what are the fossa in relation to the normal atralis so you can see this is the temporal fossa above the zygomatic arch and below this this is the infratemporal fossa so the zygomatic bone is hidden here This is the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid which separates the temporal fossa and the infratemporal fossa. And uh, so this is the temporal fossa and this is the infratemporal fossa and deep to the zygomatic arch the temporal fossa communicates with the infratemporal fossa. And structure passing through the gap between the zygomatic arch and the skull or the tendon of the temporalis muscle then the deep temporal vessels and deep temporal nerves. So these three structures passes through the gap between the zygomatic arch and the skull bone. Now we will see the attachment. So attached to the superior temporal line and the area between the superior and the te inferior temporal line or the temporalis fascia. And attached to the temporal fossa, you get the muscle, the temporalis muscle. And attached to the medial aspect and the lower border of the zygomatic arch, you get the masseter muscle. Attached to the articular tubercle, you get the lateral ligament of temporomandibular joint. And attached to the lateral aspect of the mastoid process, you get the insertion of three muscles from before backwards. You get the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the splenius capitis muscle and the longismus capitis muscle. So three muscles are inserted into the lateral aspect of the mastoid process from before backwards, sternocleidomastoid, the splenius capitis and the longismus capitis muscle. The structure passing through the tympanomastoid fissure is the auricular branch of the facial nerve. And the structure passing through the mastoid foramen are the emissary vein which connects the sigmoid sinus and the posterior auricular vein and also the meningeal branch from the occipital artery. And you, you can see a foramen over the temporal surface of the zygomatic bone. That foramen is called as in this region. In the real skull you can see the zygomatico temporal foramen through which the zygomatico temporal nerve emerges through. This gives the overall view of the normal lateralis.